I'm Shark Fan One here, and welcome back. I am very excited to check out a trailer movie reaction. We've had a minute since we've done one of these. I'm excited to get back into the movie game, and today we are checking out the movie trailer for Mufasa for the 2024 live action Lion King prequel called Mufasa. And I'm really kind of excited to see where they go with this because honestly, I, along with a lot of other people, did not vibe with the live action at all. I didn't see the live action, but I saw reviews to it. And honestly, just the reviews kind of gave me enough of what I needed to know. I didn't want to watch it. But I don't know. Maybe they'll surprise us. Maybe they, you know, learned from their fails. Maybe they learned a thing or two. I don't know. I'm excited to get into it. So sit back, grab a snack. My first time watching the Mufasa trailer for 2024. Ooh, a wintry landscape. This story begins far beyond the mountains and the shadows. Okay. On the other side of the light. I hate the monkey design. A lion was born without Ooh, a drop of nobility in his blood. A lion who would change our lives forever. Mufasa. Aww. It's still got the same design, the same kind of vibe as the first one. Shake. This is how we find out how he meets Sarabi. Awaits you. Aww. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's how he meets. What the fuck? Wait a second. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. Right. Used me more than anything. Okay, is it like a prequel to Lion King? So this is Mufasa's life, obviously, before Lion King. So why were Timon and Pumbaa there? Unless that wasn't Timon and Pumbaa, but I don't know who else the f it would have been. I feel like I have mixed feelings about this. Kind of giving Black Widow treatment in the sense that in 1994, when they made the first Lion King, obviously, spoiler alert, Mufasa dies. So. For us to get a backstory on a character who's inevitably going to die in the in in the end anyway, like it's great to find out their story and what became of that person beforehand, but like it doesn't really make a damn bit of difference because we still know that he dies. And like it, like I said, in the same thing happened with Black Widow. It's like she got this great movie, but it was after Endgame, after she had already died. So like it's great that they're elaborating on this character and giving them more development, but like it doesn't matter because they still met the same end in the same fate. So I don't know. Odds are I'm not going to see this movie. I'm not going to do a reaction to this movie unless you guys really want me to, but I, I don't even think there's really an audience for the prequel necessarily yet because everybody's still kind of got a bad taste in their mouth from the live action Lion King, even though it's been a couple of years since that came out. But I feel like they're, it's a little bit of a cash grab and it's a little bit of running out of ideas, you know, giving that vibe. Because again, literally telling the, the story of a character who's going to die anyway. So like, why do we need this story? But I did think it was an interesting concept for them to decide to do a Mufasa prequel because it would be kind of nice to see how um, the struggles and the life of Mufasa turn him into the great leader and great father figure he was. But again, kind of giving doesn't matter because character dies anyway. How do you guys feel? Are you going to watch it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Will you skip it? And if so, why? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for staying awesome. And until next time, guys. Okay, sorry. Editor Sherlock fan here. I'm confused. Okay, so like I'm digging. I'm doing a little more digging as I'm in the comments of this um, trailer. And first of all, okay, I'm really salty because not that Aaron, whatever this guy's name, is not going to do a bang-up job, I'm sure. But who the fuck else is going to play Mufasa other than the iconic James Earl Jones? I mean, you literally picked a different actor to play the... I, I mean, is that just the kid Mufasa or is that like the adult Mufasa the whole time? Because how are you going to have... How are you going to have Mufasa without having James Earl Jones. I mean, he's not, and he's still alive, so we could use his voice and use him. And so like that, that, oh God, and Seth Rogen's back. Oh God, okay. 
Um, and then we've got, and, and then there's some other stuff here that I wanted to talk about. If you want to skip out of this, I totally get it, but this is just kind of an overview of my feelings for this. Um, it says that this is basically a retelling from Rafiki to Kiara, which I don't know why we're doing that. There's already a sequel, um, to Kiara about, and Simba and Nala and all them are hearing a story about Mufasa and his past and all that kind of stuff. And then I guess the story introduces Mufasa as an orphaned cub lost and alone until he meets a sympathetic lion named Taka, the heir to a royal bloodline. The chance meeting sets in motion an expansive journey of an extraordinary group of misfits searching for their destiny. Their bounds, bonds will be tested as they work together to invade a threatening and deadly foe. Okay, so my other thing is, let's get out of this. My other thing is, literally isn't Scar's name, like his real name, Taka? I, I hope I'm saying that right. But like, that doesn't, like, no wonder he was fucking pissed. Because in the first movie, Mufasa gets the royal treatment first. Like, he gets to be king first. Why the fuck does that make any sense? Because if he's not even really the brother of Taka, then, like, that doesn't make any sense why Mufasa would get this special treatment and, like, Scar would be thrown to the wayside. If Scar was part of a royal bloodline and Mufasa was not, why did they treat Mufasa like the special, like, the special child? Like, th this whole thing is just a mind blown. It just, it totally rips apart the entire, like, first and second movie, but more like the first movie. But... Is this just a whole new baseline? Are they retelling the story entirely? Are they just going to ignore the fact that Scar kind of has a reason and right to be pissed in this case if they make this story? I don't know. It... These are just my thoughts. This is what I've, uh, I've seen just from the trailer and just from reading what I've just read. But I don't know. This is just an editor's note. What are your guys' feelings? Let me know down in the comment below, comments below. Do you think that, like, Scar had a reason to be salty if, like, we know that this fact is true, that he was a royal bloodline and Mufasa was just an orphan child who happened to become part of his family? Do we need justice for Scar? Is that... I don't want to do justice for Scar, not after what he did to Mufasa. I don't want that. But that might be what we need to do. We want to go home.